Hey guys, it's May May, and I've been playing around with these little ink daubers, or these ink pads again. I'm treating them like daubers, and I made some tulips. Now, I'm bringing you both of these because I decided to show you both ways I did them. This way is more just the pad, and this way is with a little watercolor technique. I do that in quotes because I'm not a watercolorist. I just played around. So, let's make these two guys. I'll show you how to do it. So first off, I love these little ink pads. I have found so many uses for them. And if you have not seen them, I will link a playlist that shows you how I've used them for so many different things. And if you would like to get some, we carry them in the store. Okay, so I've got two pieces of paper and this is actually just 110 um, weight Nina. It's not watercolor paper. And I think this would be even prettier on watercolor. But when I was playing, I just used this one. All right, for the first little tulip I showed you for kind of the solid color one. I did it with three colors of red. This is angel pink, rosebud, and love letter. And I'm going to start with the lightest color first. And this is going to lay down our tulip shape, okay? We're going to use this pad to create the tulip with three presses, all right? So we're going to go like this. We're going to press it down once, and that's going to get us kind of the first petal of our tulip. Now to make this work, you gotta trust me on this, you need to try to keep them lined up at the bottom to make your next petal so it will look more realistic. If your petal comes way out here, it's not gonna look like a tulip. So you're gonna line the bottom of that ink pad up at a slight tilt, just enough to get you another tulip point. See that? Lined up at the bottom, another tulip point. Now I'm gonna come over here and do the same thing, lined up at the bottom and another tulip point. So if we keep them close together with the three points at the top, we get a really nice tulip look. Let's do another one down here. So there's that one, slight tilt out, because I mostly want my tips up there to be separated. And another thing, when you lift up, if you lift to the point, you get a better point too. So there's my second tulip. Now you could, and I want to hold this up really close so you can see it, you could stop right here with this, have a little distressed looking tulip at a stem, some leaves, what have you, and it's a tulip. I took it a step further. I wanted a little more dimension. So I took another color and on top of that, I did a light press right over the last ones I did. So now I'm getting two colors of my tulip. So the middle lightly, the side one, and the side one, okay? So now I've got two colors working. I'll bring that up again so you can see it too. Nice and close. So see how we've got a pale pink in the background and then the darker at the front? Now, here's another trick, which I think is neat. You know how when you color and you kind of do the darker to the lighter? We're gonna do that with this color. With this color, I'm gonna press in the same places, but mostly at the bottom. See how I'm getting that darker at the bottom? I'm not worried about the top as much. I just want it on the bottom. So see that? We've got kind of some variegated color. I think it's really cool. I'm not even touching the tip of this pad down, just the bottom and the sides. So look at that. Now our tulips have some dimension to them too. Let me bring them up so you can see them. So see how the top looks like that and the bottom is darker? I love this. Now this is the way I did the first one. Now the next thing I did is I took the stem stamp from my Sunflower Wishes stamp set and I'm using it for the stem of the tulips. And I used Northern Pine out of the Memento ink pads. And it doesn't have to be a perfectly stamped, a perfect, you know, solid stamped image because these guys aren't. But I'm just going right to the base of our tulip and stamping that down. Look how good that looks. Oh my goodness, I love it. And then I'm gonna take this same stamp and I'm gonna turn it so I can use it for the other image. Ink it back up. I've got some ink on my work surface. I'm not gonna stress about that right now. I'll deal with that in a second. And then this one is going to go like this. And I don't have them overlapping. You can, but I thought that was pretty. Look how cool that is. So easy. I love these ink pads. Now on this one, I'm going to take VersaFine Onyx Black ink, and I'm just going to put a sentiment up here at the top that says, roses are red, violets are blue. Wait, these aren't roses. Oh, well. And then on the inside of the card, we can put another sentiment to match it. How cute is that for the front of a card? And super easy. So there's one way to do it. Let's look at another. Now for this one, we play a little more and we get a little more artistic with it. Let me show you how I did it. Same size piece of paper. What's fun about this is cutting some front mats down for cards and playing with this, then putting these aside for later to make into cards. I think it's fun to make these kind of backgrounds or focal images. Now on this one, 
in my mind, I was picturing those pretty three colored um, tulips that are kind of the yellow with the orange frilly edges. It's not exactly what we end up with, but it's pretty close. So I'm gonna take this dandelion color and make the base of our tulip just like before. So there, turn out my point. Sometimes you'll make them and like love, it'll be like the perfect tulip and that one feels pretty perfect to me. And sometimes they won't be so perfect. Guess what? That's what nature is as well. It's never perfect. Look how good that looks. Now this time I'm not gonna stamp these guys down. I'm gonna play with a water brush. Now for this one, we've laid down the tulip base. I'm gonna use some memento called Tangelo and I've put it on an acrylic block. I just patted it on to give myself a palette of the orange. And I'm using a water brush and I actually think this is a Crayola water brush. I'm not sure, but I think it's just one from like the regular section at Walmart. But here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna squeeze it and drop some water out. Not a whole lot of water, because remember I'm not using watercolor paper. So I'm gonna put that there and then run my brush in it. Now what I've discovered is less is more. So start with less and work your way to more. Now what I'm doing is going to the base of the flower and just in kind of curvy strokes, just kind of going up the edge of what would be the tulip and just giving some color to those edges of it. And I wanna show you something else I did. I would go to the edge of that um, border and just wiggle my brush and it feels very frilly, like those frilly tulips that I'm trying to mimic. So I'm just going to the edge of that shape and just wiggling a line in. And remember, this is the lighter of the colors. So we're starting with the lighter first. I'm doing this very painterly. And people ask me when I say that term what that means. Painterly is kind of a looser style. I'm not trying to be perfect or specific. I'm trying to be very loose, like a loose watercolor painting. Now I'm through with that color, so I'm gonna wipe it off of the block and see where it was on our block. And now I'm gonna go into this color that is Morocco, which is a deeper orange, and just pat a little bit of that on my block. And I'm gonna use it to shade as well. Squeeze some water, pick some up, start at the bottom. Because I want this color, I want this tulip darker at the bottom. Again, strokey, painterly, not perfect. I want this one to feel very loose, very frilly. You just play and have fun. Everyone will be different, by the way. You'll never get two of these alike, and you'll see that when I show you back to the original that I did. They won't match, and it doesn't matter. That's kind of cool. So really what I did with that um, ink pad was give myself a base. I was kind of thinking I kind of went away from what I had, but I really like how this looks. And it helps me to have, not to have to draw one, a tool about by hand and just use that base to make it happen. All right, I'm gonna stop there because I can overdo it, but look how cool those look. And we just mimicked or went around and kind of messy did this shape. Now what I wanna do is stamp our stem Again, I'm gonna use that same green. I'm gonna stamp this one. Then the next one. They, you can cross your stems if you want. They don't have to, they can meet. It really doesn't matter. That's up to you. Now for the fun part. I'm going to my little junky notebook. This is my inking notebook. And now I'm gonna go back to that acrylic block. And I'm gonna do all four of these colors in a splatter. Let me move this where you can see the colors. The same four we just used, we're gonna splatter with. I'm gonna start with the light yellow, and on my acrylic block, on one corner, I'm gonna tap some of that yellow there. You can see that. Then I'm gonna take my water brush and put a drop of water. And now, from the edge of this block, I'm going to flick yellow onto this page. And you can get pretty specific because of the way we're doing this on our block and you can just flick that on. Now you're probably not gonna be able to see the yellow flicks. I'll bring them up so you can see them, but the other colors you'll be able to see. All right, let's get close. See all those little yellow flicks? Specks, kind of speckled, I love that. So I'm gonna clean my block off again. This guy's gonna get used a lot today. And go to the next color. Let's use Tangelo. 
All right, again, it's on the corner of my block. Drop some water, and then we're gonna flick that onto our surface. This one you'll start to be able to see flick out. Look how pretty that is. Oh, maybe you can't see it. I look in the camera and maybe you can't see it. Let me bring it up. So there's the orange. Now, next color, the Morocco color, onto the edge of the block. Squeeze it out of water. I'm not even cleaning my brush in between because it doesn't matter if the colors contaminate because I'm doing them lightest to darkest. Look how good that looks. Now, if you're not getting as good a um, speckle as that and you need to be more specific, you can take your brush and just tap it down wherever you think you need extras. Last color, I'm even gonna do the green. I'm gonna put some on my block. I'm gonna squeeze a little water onto the block and then I'm gonna splatter this one out as well. I love how this looks, it is so cool. Now here again, let's say I want some more green, I can just take my brush and dot it here and there because it's got that color in it because it was the last one that we splattered. Look how cool that is, I love it. All right, let me clean this up and we will finish up. Now we're gonna turn one of them into a card together so you can see how I do that. This is an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock that I have cut down the middle long ways. I'm gonna take this piece, which is now four and a quarter by 11, and I'm gonna score it in half at five and a half. That is a standard A2 card base. It's that simple. I get asked that question a lot, and um, it's it's easy to get confused because there's so many different you know sizes, and people use different standard card sizes. I make an A2 card, and that way I can get two bases from one piece of cardstock. Now this guy needs this guy. Look how pretty that's gonna be on there. I love that together. Let's glue that down. I put some art glitter glue on the back. I'm gonna slide this into place, leaving some of that yellow border to show from our card base. And then, this card is ready. Now the only thing I will do different, I'll keep this one in my stash for future use, but when I get ready to use it, I'll put another piece of white in here and a sentiment that goes with the occasion. At this point, I could use this card for anything and I think it is perfect. Now let's go back to these. So as you can see, this was the very first one I did, and it's not nearly to me as pretty as even the second t attempt. I think it's prettier this way, but you can play with those um, dewdrop pads and do all kinds of stuff. So there's those two together, and this one, remember how I told you they were different? But look how beautiful they turn out. Super simple, super easy. I love these ink pads. So another way to use them, again, check out the playlist I have for these. I've done so many different things and I have so many other ideas in my head that we'll probably get around to soon enough. But I hope you guys are enjoying your ink pads as much as I am and I want to see what you're doing with them. So head over to our Facebook group, which is called May May Made It and So Did I, and show me what you're doing with your little ink pads. I love inspiration from you guys. I think you always take my ideas and turn them up about a thousand notches. Thanks so much for watching today. Until next week, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.